Hi everyone, welcome back to tutorials. I know how I haven't done a tutorial in a million years, but I thought it was really important to do one today. And I wanted to show you something that maybe isn't what all of you would want. Lots of you have asked for all kinds of different tutorials, but I think this is a really important subject. So as you've been following the tutorials, you know we're using a software kit called GBDK, the Game Boy Developer Kit. There's actually a new version of that that's being developed by a whole group of people. And I think it's a really important release. And so I want to show you that today. Let's get started. I know lots of you are starting to build your own games or have already really got on with your games and I think I wanted to share this kind of update because I'm finding it really useful and I'm sure you will if you haven't already found it. So those of you who've been following the tutorials through we're using some uh, software called GBDK so the Game Boy Developer Kit and that is software it's a, a compiler as long, and a lot of other things that takes code written in C which is kind of what we've got on here um, and C is a quite old language now, but it's very humanly readable. You can kind of see what's going on if you understand some simple programming concepts. You can follow it through and read it. And GBDK takes C and converts it into Assembler, which is still readable by humans. Plenty of people can program in that. Um, it's not my preferred way to code. It's a lot more confusing, I personally find it. Uh, and I think it has a much bigger learning curve. And so lots of people have always argued that you should write an assembly because it um, is much closer to what the actual computer runs, what the Game Boy runs, and you'll make uh, better decisions. And, and they're right. They're absolutely right. If you really understand that language, you will probably end up writing better games. Um, but I've always struggled to put that time in and that effort in, if I'm honest, to actually learn that language. Uh, the language that I use every day at work is much closer to something like C and I can get up and running. I was able to write my own game. Those of you who haven't seen it, Dino, Dino's Offline Adventure is my game. I was able to write that much quicker than I would have had done in assembly. But the argument has always been that you will only be able to get so far writing something in GBDK before you hit problems because you don't really understand the hardware. Uh, and I definitely found challenges where I was writing things, things that were just a bit weird. But a lot of those were due to that we were using GBDK and all my tutorials do do uh, a really old version that hadn't been updated for many years. And some of the other parts of software that it uses to actually do its compilation were massively out of date, had lots of bugs that were known in. Um, but thankfully, someone has actually, uh, a group of people have taken uh, GBDK and they've started to update it as much as they can everywhere without breaking things that we need. Um, and so there is now a version called GBDK 2020 uh, and you can actually get it from this website here. It's on GitHub. I think the guy who's doing it is Zalo or Zal Zero, not sure what you call yourself. Um, but there are actually quite a few people, I think, actually contributing to this. Those of you who have no idea what GitHub is, if you're not a software developer, it's where you can share code that you're writing with other people to contribute, basically. Uh, and you can go here and read this. Um, I'll show you how to download it in a moment. Um, but effectively, they are going through making it use the new compiler and various things that have lots of bug fixes in, but they're also going back and improving GBDK. So you can actually see in here that it's had 136 130 code changes to date. It's being actively developed all the time. You can see quite a few people getting involved here. There's a lot of noise in the community about it that's brilliant. I'm sure it still has some issues, um, but it's actually definitely very usable now. Um, I've actually switched over to using it. Haven't really come across anything stopping me, but it's actually been really helpful to identify some problems with my code. And I'm sure it will fix some problems that people have experienced and couldn't explain. So basically, just like GBDK, um, all you have to do is come to this website uh, and then go to the releases tab here. You can see there are four releases currently. Find the latest release uh, and then download either the Mac OS one or the Windows one. And you download that. You'll find a GBDK folder in here. And just like before, just copy and paste that. Uh, I, I prefer to have it in the root here. So I've just for this tutorial kept an old version of GBDK in a folder called GBDK and I put GBDK 2020 in its own folder. If I was you, I would just delete GBDK and put GBDK 2020 in its place in a folder there and then all your build scripts will carry on working and you won't have to worry about anything. But I wanted to show you some differences today that are just really subtle but I think really, really helpful. 
So that's how you install it. Uh, if we just go and get my um, game open, uh, Dino's Offline Adventure, um, I've never really shown everyone this, but the, the source code is online for people to see. It doesn't really matter, there's lots of complicated code in here, but what I wanted to show you is how it compiles and what happens in GBDK and in GBDK 2020, because I think it's really interesting. So I've got two make files. I've got one called build.bat and one called build2020.bat. So if we run the original, which is what I've always been using to date, build.bat, there we are. If I run that, it all runs through. If we scroll back to the top, you'll see it, uh, it compiled all its things. There were no errors. Uh, it did a few other things that I've got going on in mine, but no errors, it all compiled. And that game runs, it, does, it definitely does run. Um, but there are definitely some weird things still in the game that I've noticed. Um, and I'm sure there's lots of things that I don't write very well in C. And so what I found was really interesting when I ran it in GBDK 2020 is it doesn't compile, but it gives me a much better um, idea of its errors. It's, its error messages are much clearer in, in my opinion. And I've helped a few other people um, who've had problems recently um, with their own games. I've run it in GBDK 2020 and I've been able to find out what the problem is much quicker because the, the feedback's a little easier. So if we run this uh, and actually scroll up here. Okay, here's some error messages here. So it won't actually run, this didn't actually compile. So I'm gonna have to go and fix these. But these are things that probably always shouldn't have compiled and I should have been warned about and they may be causing problems in my game. Um, so there are a few things here. One is talking about external definitions for sprites data mismatches with its declaration. Now, that may still be gobbledygook to you. I, I completely get that. But it showed me two errors, one in sprites.c on line 62 and one in sprites.h on line 29. So I'm going to have a look at those two. So if I go to uh, sprites.c and go to line 62, It's hopefully actually the end of the um, array here. So it's this kind of whole line, uh, a bit confusing and you, you might not um, be able to identify that. But it's complaining something to do with this constant unsigned char sprites data, this. Um, and if I go and look at the other one, sprites.h, which is the header file. If you don't understand about C and header files, I recommend you go and read about them. You'll see here I've got the same thing defined as an external unsigned char. Whereas in sprites.c, it's a const unsigned char. Now, I did this deliberately because I read online if you set it as a constant, it handles the memory better. Um, but I changed it in sprites.c, but I didn't change it in sprites.h. And, and header files kind of describe the C file that you're going to write, so they really, really should uh, match. So actually, to get rid of this error, if I just put const here, so it's uh, const unsigned char, const unsigned char, so same here. So if I do that and then I rerun that code, I'm just going to clear the screen. You will see uh, it's got rid of that one. So I've, I haven't got the one uh, complaining about sprites now, but I have got one about background and about map and about font. Uh, and they're actually uh, all the same error. So we'll just go quickly fix those. They're all the same thing. Once.h. And map.h. So now they match their own C files. Okay, I've still got some errors here though. Um, so I've got one about line 76 in main. So I'm going to open up and close these files down and open up main and go to line 76. So this is probably the biggest bug and I think there's a good chance this may actually be causing some problems in my game. So line 76 is this. I have a unsigned integer, an 8-bit unsigned integer, so u int 8, uh, that is an array and the array contains seven integers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, there's a space there which I should just tidy up, but that's just semantic. 
Uh, so it doesn't really matter that space, it's just me being consistent. Um, but what does matter is I've told it that it is a collection of unsigned integers, which means they don't have a minus sign, it's positive only, yet I am storing in it unsigned uh, integers, because I probably changed it at some point. So I've got a minus 26, minus three, and minus one. So that should not be unsigned. That should be an integer eight. So if I do that again, clear the screen, you'll see it's got rid of that error again. So it's still uh, complaining about two things, um, but it did actually compile now. So I actually did manage to get a game out of it that time because um, I got rid of all the, the major errors. Uh, so the last one it's complaining about is on line 129. So unreachable code means that um, it's never gonna get to a piece of code that you've got there um, because whatever you've got above is never gonna finish. So I above it have uh, a while loop and that while loop isn't checking anything, it's just gonna carry on forever because it's my main game loop, the thing that's looping around every time and running something. But after that, I've got something to do with the banking controllers where I'm disabling something, um, but that's never ever actually gonna get hit. And so this isn't gonna stop anything working, but it's just starting to tell me that you've got code there, you may as well not bother having that code you can kind of get rid of. Uh, so I think that's why it's complaining about that. But as you'll see, oh, get rid of that. I recompile this now I've got that you'll see it's still actually complaining about it so line 1 to 9 is still got an error on and I don't understand why that is so I, I can't actually explain it's still within that while loop is that just a leftover of what I compiled a moment ago I'm not sure but hopefully you'll see that the new version as well as loads of bugs you're never going to see that it's fixed in the background it its output when you try and compile is much more helpful and I think it will help you make less mistakes. Um, so I thought that'd be a good kind of time to show everyone this. Go and swap over your projects. You shouldn't find any problems for it. If you do find any problems, um, then I recommend one going having a look at the GBDK 2020 um, repository on GitHub. You can actually raise issues there, um, but also uh, they're all these guys are always seem to be around on some of the help forums so you'll see down here if you look down the bottom the Game Boy Developer Forum or the GB Dev Discord community is a great place to go and ask people for help there um, and the people there who know way more about writing C uh, than I do so much as I can help you they can probably help you a lot quicker and better. So that's all for now I just thought I'd show you that really loved seeing some of your games recently I will eventually get around to putting that video together where we show off a whole of the community's kind of new and upcoming games because I think it's really exciting to see what other people are doing but that's all for now thanks for watching.